everyone. Well, then, to Tuesday night prayer. Um, this is a side note, but it was included in just what I'm going to talk about tonight. Um, it made me think about our voting yesterday. Um, and this, of course, is talking about the states, but um, they did a survey of Christians, uh, evangelical Christians, and between 30 and 40 percent of evangelical That means, like this gentleman said, millions of people, millions of Christians that do not vote. And this this was um, done just recently. So they were talking, of course, they have an election coming up, but it made me think yesterday, like I know the polling station that we went to yesterday, they only had a few hundred people come, like mm -hmm. in that Cambridge Narrow, Narrows area. Wow. So this gentleman is just saying, like, we have, a, we have, we, are to pray, but we are to take it further than just praying. That yeah. We are to take it okay. to a place that we have to do something yeah. about it. We can't mm -hmm. just sit and pray, but we need to vote. So this is the sideline, but because we will have another election coming up next year, and um, and of course they're talking to the states people, but but as Christians, we as anybody, we need to get out and to vote and to. Because it could change a lot of things yeah. if, if uh, people um, vote. Anyway, just a side note, but they're talking about praying and voting as well. So um, it's not enough for us just to pray. And we should pray, but and that should be our first response. But we need to be activated by God and the Holy Spirit to, to exercise our given rights to vote and to make a difference. Um, they're just talking about, because like I said, they have a big election coming up. But, and so whether that's in your family, whether that's with people that you know, just to encourage them, encourage them to vote, encourage them to pray, encourage them not just to sit idly by mm -hmm. regarding the nation, mm -hmm. because we, we are to occupy until yeah. he comes yeah. back. To show up on God's radar screen in this hour is what we are is one of the things we're here for. We're not just to be spiritual wallflowers, but instead, let us be people who step into a situation in hand and intercede mm -hmm. and let God use us even in practical ways. We must resist the distractions and take our seat of authority. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm sort of talking about tonight. Yeah. And, um, and I'm talking to me, so um, if you need it, did, but I, I do need they to did. take, um, the, the distractions are many, the, and they yeah. seem to be mounting more and more every day. He said that one of the pastors at Eagle Mountain Church had said, we must take our seat of authority and resist distractions. Now is the time to rise up above these distractions and to step boldly into our authority. And we've heard that so many times. And um, when we take a stand firm in faith and refuse to be swayed, God works through us on the Amen. earth. Amen. In Luke 10, 19, there's a, that's a scripture. I, it's gonna, I'm going to read from the 17th verse to start with. But it says, it's talking about the 70 returning. Mm -hmm. He sent the 70 out yeah. to do ministry in his name. And remember when they came back, they said, um, they return with joy, saying, even the demons are subject yeah. to us in, yes. in your name. Yes. And then verse 18 says, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. This was Jesus' eyewitness account. He saw it himself. And um, he saw Lucifer cast out of heaven. And he himself saw him cast out of heaven, out of his original state from where he was from originally onto the earth, and he said he tossed him out on his butt. That <laughs> the Lord cast Satan out, and he wanted to make it very clear to people reading the word that he Satan has no place any longer in God's kingdom, and he was tossed to earth into the earth realm. And then after saying that scripture, I saw Satan fall from heaven. The next words say. 
Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. And he said, there should be a lot of crunching underneath our feet going on in our in believers' lives, yeah. and especially today more so than mm. maybe before. And you should be making crunching noises today as you go about yeah. your day. You just don't sit and take it. And a lot of times um, people take it. We just sit and take it. Even if it's a small thing, like even if it's a touch of depression, discouragement, um, those are signals and cues that it's time for us to march. It's time to trample on the enemy. It's time to exercise or deploy our authority. Even if you can do it, even if all you can do is mutter the name of Jesus. And that's all you can do. Demons look for expression place to go, right? Because in the Bible it talks about when Jesus was cast in the mud, they said, cast us into those pigs, into those swine. So they're looking for a voice. They're looking for a place to go so that they can can um, speak. Um, they're looking for a body. And the truth be told, they're looking for a means of expression um, because this embodied spirits can't express themselves in the earth. Um, they want a voice, the privilege to be able to speak after the order of God. Well, guess what? We don't have to bargain with anybody. He already did the bargaining for us. We don't bargain. We don't bargain with demons. We have a voice. And again, this same guy must be speaking this week that I used because he says you have a belly button, which means you are a human. So he's that's the second time he's mentioned that. But we're born into the earth realm. From the line of original humans, um, we have a right of salvation. We have the privilege of, to receive salvation. And upon receiving salvation, we are gifted with certain privileges and benefits and positions. Um, and one of those is the privilege to be able to speak after the order of God. To speak and create, to speak and deploy authority, and to speak and set in motion kingdom principles. So those are... Um, five thi- or four things that, that are a privilege that come with our salvation that we are to do. Um, but Jesus goes on to say in that scripture, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions um, and over all the power. And he said, somebody say all. So all means all. all means He's all. given us the power and the authority to over all. All the power of the enemy and nothing by any means will hurt us. We're on a divine assignment. So stir yourselves up with that today. Um, He's talking, this was yesterday, so he says, begin a new week. Stir it up, regardless of what's going on in your life, how great it looks or how challenging it looks. You've been sent here on a divine assignment, and we're here according to Jesus to offer. It's clear, really clear in the word that Jesus obtained some things. He defeated. He gave the enemy an eternal beatdown. And we don't have to defeat the enemy anymore. Right. He's already been mm-hmm. defeated. Mm-hmm. David Barton, who I don't know who he is, but he Wall said... Build. He's what? He has an organization called Wall Build. Okay. Anyway, he said that we can operate as priests from a spiritual dimension and a spiritual realm through prayer. And then through exercising our authority through representatives of heaven upon the earth in our generation. But we also can operate as kings or leaders wherever God has assigned us to be. And whether that means in your household, whether that means at work, a small group, your church, a leader in a civic arena, or nationally. Then he was talking about them having some candidates in their service from uh, on Sunday from that were in the U.S. Senate or running for the Senate, mm-hmm. and he was saying like they have that like these people obviously are Christians, but they have that as a civic they're running civically for the nation. Plus, they also have um, a, a dimension that they work from for the Lord as well. They are leaders in that extent. So I want to challenge you this morning that reminder that we've been given authority to trample. 
we're going to deploy some of the power um, of that today. And um, in Ephesians, he says, there's, the Bible says, don't give the enemy a place, don't give him a foothold, don't give him an entrance, run him out of your life, run him out of situations, run him out of your home and stand your ground. And then this word that we've heard here before, not on our watch devil. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what we're, we do when we come to morning prayer, or when we come to prayer anytime, yeah. or even at home. We're standing our ground. Yes. We're taking our authority. Yeah. We're occupying. We're saying to yeah. the devil, when we come together to pray, not on our watch. Yeah. Um, any inspired diabolical strategy from beneath that's come upon our shores that's tempting our children, that's seeking an attack on our nation or city, we're not going to stand for it. Right. We're going to show up on God's radar screen once again and be counted in the kingdom of God. God will have his way, and we know that it's going to happen. Um, things are turning. He's going to have his way in our generation, and he is having his way. Um, it's unfolding as, as I speak, and he's yeah. continued to partner with us as we, as we pray to bring forth revival, that people's eyes will be open to the gospel um, in different areas, even people that we don't think that will ever come to the Lord. He's changing those yeah. people. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then there's, of course, people that are, are not going to be, that are going to refuse, but he is working, and there are many um, that he is working on, and that and they are coming to the Lord. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to use our body and our voice, because there is real authority, real directives, real assignments, real power, and real anointing that is released when we pray. And he gave some quotes about prayer that some people have said, and Arthur Pink one that says prayer is not so much an act as it is an attitude an attitude of dependency and dependency upon God and then brother Lawrence once said there is not in this world a kind of life more sweet and more delightful delightful than a continual conversation with God Oswald, Oswald Chambers said prayer does not fit us for the greater work prayer is the greater work cool. Leonard Ravenhill once said, a sinning man stops praying, and a praying man stops sinning. <laughs> and he also said, if weak in prayer, we are weak in everything. Ian Bound said, the story of every great Christian achievement is the history of answered prayer. Amen. So that's what Can I have. that last one again, Tom? The story of every great Christian achievement is the history of answered prayer. That's wonderful. Who said that? Does it say? Ian Bounds, Ian I think. Bounds. 